welcome again to your own YouTube channel Ask Your Gynecologist. I am Dr. Sonal Parikar. As usual, I am back with a new video suggested by you all. Right? Now, last week, uh, you saw the video on Hydrox Fetalis. Right? Now, Hydrox Fetalis, I told you, immune Hydrox Fetalis, the major cause of this Hydrox Fetalis immune one is ISO immunization because of RH incompatibility. So, that is why I have chosen this topic so that you can correlate the two videos because you have just recently watched that video. Okay, so before I actually start talking about this video, I would just like to thank you that uh, you all are liking and subscribing my channel very well. Thank you very much. Docwise app is working very well. Many patients have been connected and the good news is that uh, recently Docwise people have actually started accepting people from outside India as well. So the international, international patients who want to connect with me through Docwise, now it is good news for you. You can easily pay. The payment options are open. The only problem is that it will take another 10-15 days to start the international courts. Because the patients in India, they can request a call, I can call them back. But patients sitting outside India with the international number, it was very difficult to call them through Dogwise. But now that is also getting sorted. So within maybe 10 to 15 days, that will be sorted as well. Okay. So please download Dogwise app on your mobile play store. This is my uh, pen C2TXJ. These are the technical numbers in case you have any technical query. People who are in India, they can easily connect with me uh, through Dogwise app or you can easily come to my hospital if you want to. This is the hospital's address and the secretary's number. The lines are open from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Please do not call after 8 p.m. Okay. Uh, other than that, I have got other portals on which you can post a question. Try and stick to YouTube. It's very difficult to answer questions on other portals. But the reason I give you is many times YouTube is loaded with questions and sometimes I'm not able to read all of them. Although I do try, but sometimes the questions get hidden and people, they get very frustrated why I'm not answering their questions. So you can uh, either send them on Twitter or Instagram or the Facebook pages. Right. Uh, so coming back to the topic. RH incompatibility. Now, what is this RH incompatibility? Well, RH basically is a part of your blood group. Now, we all know A, B, O and A, B. These are the blood groups which is the ABO system. Okay. The incompatibility in A, B and O is not that big because the antibodies developed in this ABO incompatibility are not that uh, lethal, are not that fatal that they will harm the baby. It is more of a problem when a wrong blood of a wrong blood group is transfused. So blood transfusion is more risky when it comes to ABO incompatibility. But when it comes to a mother and the fetus, then RH isoimmunization, RH incompatibility is very, very fatal or lethal. That is why we are, we are discussing this today. Okay. Now, for only 15% of the total world's population is RH negative. That means this 15% of the population does not contain the D antigen. Because it is a D antigen, which if it is present, then it is known as positive. If it is not present, then it is known as negative. Okay. So 15% of the population is RH negative. And out of these 15%, there will be some ladies and some men. So we are just talking of that small subset of ladies, the women who are RH negative. Now suppose this RH negative lady gets married to a RH positive man. And they have a baby. Now this baby can be either RH positive or RH negative. Okay. So we were just talking about a condition in which the RH negative mother has a RH positive baby inside the womb. Right? Now in case this RH negative mother has a RH negative baby inside the womb, nothing will happen. Okay? Because they are both having no antigen, no anti, no D antigen. Now, what about the opposite? I am just trying to clear your confusion. If the mother is positive and the baby is negative, Baby is negative because the father might be negative. So that is not a problem. So many people ask me, ma'am, uh, the husband is uh, negative and the wife is positive. So what is the problem? No problem because it is the lady who is carrying the baby, not the, not the man. Okay. So we are just talking about the lady who is negative and who gets married to a positive uh, man. And then the baby is, we are assuming that it is RH positive. So what happens in this? Well, the lady has RBCs, which we have discussed in the previous video, Hydrox Vitalis. The RBCs are the red blood cells, which contain hemoglobin because of which it is red in color. It also contains two antigens. One is the ABO antigen. It may be A, B, AB or no antigen that is called O. And the RH antigen, the D antigen also is uh, present on the surface of this RBC. So if it is present, it's positive. If it is not present, it's negative. So we are talking about RH negative. So this particular lady does not have the D antigen. Now, when she gets pregnant, the baby's blood sometimes travels into mother's uh, blood circulation. Why does that happen and how does that happen? Because there is a connecting tube 
umbilical cord and the placenta. Now we all know that placenta is responsible for getting the blood from the mother, the nutrients, the food to the baby. So when there is a connection, it is not one way, it can be two ways as well. Some blood of the fetus, the baby, also traverses into the maternal circulation. Now this generally happens whenever uh, the delivery happens because at that time the placenta comes out, all the blood vessels are open, all the capillaries are open. So that is a time when maximum mixing of blood happens. The fetal blood comes into the maternal blood. But there are certain conditions in which like for example, uh, you have a miscarriage or you opt for an abortion, you go and get it surgically terminated or you take tablets to uh, get the baby out. So in all these conditions or you have a little bit of bleeding during pregnancy. Wherever this happens, there is a mixing of a little bit of blood of the uh, fetus in the mother. Now we cannot calculate that, we can just assume. Okay, there is no way that we can calculate. Now, not all ladies who are RH negative and carrying a positive baby, they get affected. It is only, I would say, one out of 1000. It is a very small subset, 0.1% chances that a negative mother carrying a positive baby will develop RH isoimmunization or RH incompatibility. But even that 0.1% of the population which is suffering from this is really uh, very worried and they really need help because this condition is very fatal as I discussed last time. Okay, so what happens when this little bit of fetal blood, the baby's blood goes into maternal blood? Because that blood contains RH antigen, the RBCs of the fetus, we assume it is a positive baby, so it has the D antigen. So that D antigen triggers the immune system of the mother. Just like what happens when a virus or a bacteria, any pathogen, any allergen, any foreign body enters the body, the immune system gets alert and then it starts producing antibodies. Just like I discussed in IgM and IgG video that IgM antibodies are developed. These anti antibodies, they destroy, they start attacking the RBCs of the baby which contain the D antigen because it is an antibody against the D antigen. Now, as soon as these blood cells are destroyed, these antibodies, they travel through the placenta to the baby. And now the problem arises because the baby contains all RBCs which contain D antigen. So these antibodies now start killing and breaking these RBCs. So that is why this disease is also known as hemolytic disease of the newborn. Hemolytic means it is destroying, it is getting uh, broken. It is hemolytic disease because when these baby babies, they, uh, they are born, they because of the breaking of RBCs, because of these antibodies, they have anemia, they have jaundice and whatnot. Okay, I am talking about these ba the babies who actually deliver at 9th month which are RH incompatibility and they need uh, constant surveillance by the pediatrician and they need to be admitted in the NIC. Now, hemorrhagic disease of the newborn means the baby has survived 9 months and now it is out and now we are there to treat the baby. Okay, so that means the load of antibodies was not, not that big that the baby uh, developed uh, that the baby did not suffer from hydrops or erythroblastosis fetalis. Now another name of this particular disease, after hemolytic disease of the newborn, it goes into erythroblastosis fetalis. That is a severe stage when the antibody load is very much. It is a big load and many RBCs of the baby uh, has uh, had been attacked and they are broken and then it is known as erythroblastosis fetalis. Means the erythrocytes, the red blood cells are getting broken, they are getting blasted and Fetalis means the baby is getting affected. The baby is uh, probably going into a very lethal condition. That is known as erythroblastosis fetalis. And the last condition will be hydrops fetalis, which I told you is a very, very lethal condition and very difficult for the baby to survive. So it starts from hemolytic disease of the newborn, then erythroblastosis fetalis, and then uh, hydrops fetalis. Okay. So these babies, when they are born, they need immediate attention from the pediatrician because they have loads of broken RBCs inside them. So they develop jaundice very soon. The uh, amount of jaundice that develops in these babies is very high as compared to another incompatibility like ABO incompatibility or physiological jaundice. So this particular uh, baby uh, which is born to an RH negative mother needs immediate attention. The kind of treatment that they need will be uh, phototherapy in the kind of blue light which is very important because they, they are kept in a, uh, in a chamber which is like surrounded with blue lights even uh, in the lower back. In the, in the bottom of the box there will be blue light, on the top there will be blue light, so the baby is kind of surrounded with the blue light. So that is the treatment that we give for uh, curing the jaundice and if it is severe then it might need, the baby might need uh, exchange transfusion, means the uh, blood has to be changed. Now intrauterine transfusion we have already discussed in the previous video, if it is diagnosed intrauterine that the baby is suffering from this particular problem then it will be given, given, given intrauterine transfusion and um, if the baby is born outside 
outside and the jaundice is like very much and we feel that the blood needs to be exchanged then the baby undergoes ex exchange transfusion so this is what happens when the baby is born now what do you have to do when you get pregnant and you know that you are rh negative and the husband is positive Firstly, get your investigation done at 6 weeks as I told you. As soon as you cross like 10 days or 15 days you are overdue. I have I've already discussed this in my video in which I have discussed the common investigations that need to be done. Investigations and ultrasound during pregnancy part 1 and part 2. Many patients still complain, ma'am why you are writing so many tests, I have no problem. Well, it is not that uh, you have a problem. It is just we are trying to prevent certain diseases, certain conditions which you might uh, which might crop in your baby within 9 months. Okay, So please get uh, investigations done. Blood group is very important. Get that done. In case you are negative and your husband is positive, the doctor will put a red mark on your file so that the doctor also remembers whenever you come for antenatal visit. You also remember that certain injections have to be done, some tests have to be done. And in case you travel somewhere else and you change your doctor, that doctor will also come to know that you are RH negative and your husband is positive. Okay, so that is the first thing. Now, in case you have bleeding, as I told you, in case you have bleeding in your pregnancy throughout 9 months, anytime, you need to have an anti-D shot. Anti-D is the injection. Okay, anti-D is the immunoglobulins. I will discuss it later what it does. These are the artificial immunoglobulins that we give as a single shot whenever you bleed because we assume that whenever you have a bleeding, there might be some mixing of fetal and maternal blood. So if, if you are less than 3 months, you will get only 150 international units. If you are more than 3 months, after 9 months, you will get 300 international units. And this um, is the same dose that is given in cases of miscarriage, in cases of abortion, in cases of uh, surgical termination. Less than 3 months is 150, more than 3 months it's 300. Okay. Then comes in the 7th month. In the 7th month, we assume it is a new theory. Many patients do ask me that why you are giving a repeat NTD. Initially, you did not give it. Initially, it was only after delivery. Now, the new theory is that by the time the baby reaches 28 weeks, that is the 7th month, there is some amount of mixing of the fetal blood in the maternal blood and that is the right time to give you anti-D to prevent either humanization, to prevent RH incompatibility. So as, assuming that your baby, because it is inside the uterus, we cannot check the blood group. We are assuming that your baby is positive and you are negative. So we are giving you an anti-D shot just to prevent this baby suffering from RH incompatibility. Okay. Then comes delivery. Now after delivery, because this baby is out, this baby is out of danger now. Whatever had happened, had happened inside the uterus. Now this baby is outside in the world. Now why do we give you an anti-D shot again after the delivery? This is to prevent RH incompatibility in your coming pregnancy, in your next pregnancy. So what we do is as soon as the baby is delivered, now we have the baby in front of us. We can immediately check, a blood, check the blood group and if the baby is negative, then there is no problem. Both are, neg both are negative, there will be no problem. But in case the baby is positive, then we ask the mother, do you need another baby after this? Say for example, if this baby is second or third, even first, we have to ask, do you need any more baby after this? If she says, no, my family is complete, I will not need any more babies, then she doesn't need any anti-D shot. Many a times, patients tell us that this is our last pregnancy, we do not want any more babies. So in that case, we do not give you RH anti-D injection. But in case you need further pregnancies, you are confused, then we will give you anti-D dose within 72 hours of the delivery. Within 72 hours means within 3 days of the delivery, the mother has to be given anti-D so that so as to prevent the antibodies developing inside because there is a lot of blood mixing, there is a lot of um, traveling of fetal blood into maternal blood during delivery. Okay. Now one more condition, in case it is not your first pregnancy and you come to the doctor for booking, the first question the doctor will ask you, in your previous pregnancy, whether it was a normal delivery, whether it was a caesarean, whether it was a preterm labor, whether it was just an abortion or it was just a miscarriage or maybe you took some tablets to um, get the baby out because you did not want the pregnancy or you underwent a DNC, whatever condition. In case this is not your first pregnancy, the doctor will ask you, did you get an anti-D shot in your previous uh, miscarriage or whatever pregnancy? In case you don't remember, then the doctor will do a test which is called RH antibody test. RH antibody test will detect the antibodies inside you. So in case that test comes back negative, so you are safe. That means your body has not been sensitized. The mixing of blood has not happened or even if it happened, it was very minute. The immune system has not yet been triggered and no antibodies have been developed. So you are absolutely normal. But in case that test comes back, comes back positive, that is a problem. That means your body has been sensitized. You already have developed the antibodies. The immune system is ready to attack the RBCs of the fetal, fetus, uh, the fetal blood. And this baby which is inside your uterus is now going to suffer. 
Okay, so that is a problematic condition and it has to be monitored just like I told you in the hydroxyphetalis case. Uh, regular color dopplers, regular uh, intrauterine transfusions or some might even opt to uh, abort the baby. Okay, so now I think this is all you need to know. I think I have one more thing. I need to tell you about anti-D. What does it do? Anti-D is an artificial immunoglobulin. It is an antibody that we are giving you, injecting in you artificially. Now, what you will ask that, ma'am, you already said that antibodies, they attack the fetal blood. So, why are you giving me antibodies already? We give you this antibody because this antibody does not cross the placental barrier. This will not enter the fetal blood. This will stay in you. This will stay in you and kill all the cells that are coming from the fetus. Because we do not want those cells to trigger your immune system. Because if this triggers your immune system, your antibodies will be developed and then we cannot stop it. And then it will travel in the baby's blood and it will kill the baby or it will attack the fetal RBCs. So that is why we try to catch you in a naive status. Naive means you do not, your immune system has still not been triggered. And that is the time when we give you this shot and we prevent those antigens to trigger your immune system. Okay, so this is what I wanted to tell you, the difference between anti-D and the immunoglobulins, the antibodies that you develop naturally inside your body. So friends, this is all you need to know about RH incompatibility. In case you have any more questions, any more confusions, my inbox is open. You can always uh, pop in your question or my other portals. Every day I go live, I try to answer all the questions. The questions that now I have started ignoring are the ones which are coming again and again and again. Because I want you to listen to the video every day. The live videos, even if you don't have a question, even if you have not asked the question a previous day, listen to other people's questions because your questions might be there. Your uh, queries might be answered by through some other people and you gain knowledge. Okay, so I want you to watch the video completely. All these videos that I make for you are very knowledgeable. I try to be in a, uh, make them in a very simple language and try to watch them till the end. Do not get confused, do not get bored because they are like 10 to 15 minutes videos. You can always take out time and watch them. Okay, so thank you for liking and subscribing my videos. Thank you very much. Till then, take care till you actually see my next video. Bye-bye.